hard drama for for TV. Uh, for, I'm sorry, for VH1, and uh, it's it's actually it's it's quite a fun show. Uh, I play a professional basketball coach of the Los Angeles Devils. We can't be the Lakers because the NBA they're really specific about what you can say about basketball. Um, and the show really is centered around the dance team. And they want me to say our exec producer or creator wants me to say it's more like Black Swan. But I think it's more like bring it on. So every time I say that, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. But it is. Um, I, I play this coach, and uh, uh, he's got a sort of a sorted past with women. Life does not imitate art. I'm just saying. Uh, and he uh, uh, he's he's, a, he's he's not a perfect character by any stretch of the imagination. But this the show really centers around these unbelievable dancers, and the girls are incredible dancers. And, and and all the trouble they get into in that, that high profile world. And it is a high profile world. And when you consider the head coaches making ten seven to ten million dollars a year and things like that, some of these some of these coaches are, um, the players the amount of money the players have and that flash and that glitz, it's a it's a fun world to be a part of. Um, and, and and bounce certainly will have that. There's a big giant ethnic mix in the show too. Black, white, green, yellow, Latino, you name it, Asian, it's all in there. Um, I think it's going to be a well-received show. Um, it's probably not for the kiddies. For the kiddies over here. Um, like my 12-year-old. He might watch the girls dance and be like, enjoy that, which I'm sure he will. But it's a, it's a little more adult content than, 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 uh, than like bloopers. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's no double entendre, right, with the name Bounce? Uh, there's a quadruple entendre. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and on and on. No, I love watching movies like that guy. Ah, I love those Lifetime movies. Lifetime movies, Hallmark movies, those are fun. Um, what I love about them especially is that they'll shoot on a, a short time frame. Um, one of the things that's happened with film that's changed in the last 15 years is we shoot uh, digitally. And the amount of time that saves in a production, I think, it's so difficult to even explain. Um, because you can shoot over and over and over again, you're not reloading the film all the time, and that takes an enormous amount of time. Lois and Clark would have been a lot easier deal on, on digital. Um, so we can do those things in three weeks. So I can go shoot a movie like that, I miss my child, I can bring him with me for, you know, a week or so, and, and, and then I can balance that out for life. And I, I like them because they usually have a nice message for kids, and families can watch them together. Uh, I don't have any current plan that's not entirely true. There's one that they're offering me to do right now, and I'm just trying to work on the time and the dates. Um, but I start bouncing in January, and so I have to squeeze it in December. And if I can work that out, I'll do one more. Squeeze it. I will. The like, bounce only shoots for half a year. So I have an entire half a year to do all kinds of different projects. And that's the hardest thing, is to be able to balance your, again, family life and your work life and, and, and keep options open. It's a difficult balance. But I've just about got it. We think you should be on the cover of this. Instead of, uh, <laughs> so was it? Ah, he's pretty good. He's, I, 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 he's funny. You can hear that. All right, I like him a lot. <laughs> People's sexiest man. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was great in Twenty One Jump Street, though. I, I, I let my son watch that. But he, he was pretty funny in that movie. I didn't see Magic Mike. Should have been in that. I know it costs everybody more. tight for so long. What's the difference? <laughs> well, there is a little difference. <laughs> Hi. I know you have a son and you're a parent first. So has there ever been a situation where you can share that you had to be a parent and a friend second and say, oh, God, i got to be a parent, although I want to be a friend? Uh, oh, to my son? Oh, yeah. That happens all the time. Um, but it's a pretty clear line. I, I'm able to balance that pretty well. One of my friends had four kids or something. He said to me at one point in time, exactly that. You know, it's great to be, he's my favorite person to hang around with. And we can run around, but he said, you know, be careful that you're not just, you can't just be a friend. You need to be the parent. And, um, there was a time where it, 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 I had to sort of force that on myself, but it's become really organic over the last few years. So now it's not. That difficult. I mean, when they do something wrong, it's not really that bad. You know, you should punish them. Boy, that's hard sometimes. I'll do something, and you want to laugh instead of punish them. I will laugh then punish them. Then apologize.
apologize for laughing. <laughs> Punish him again. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing. Uh, but I, you know, I had a great father. I had my father, he's actually my stepfather, but he stepped into my life when I was four. And I recall him, I, there's some similar things that I do parenting that he did that were very important to me. And one of the biggest being when I did get in trouble, and he would raise his voice or punish me or do something, and I would go into my room and sulk. I actually cleaned my room when I got in trouble. Like, everything would be just right. And he'd come in and I'd be sitting there, and I'd do something with that energy. But then he'd discuss it with me afterward in a very calm, very loving, nurturing way. And I do that with my son all the time. So after there's a, an event or something happens, that discussion time afterwards is, 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 is the key. But uh, it's become organic with me now to be a, to be a parent. Lay down the law. Oh, I, you know, I do all kinds of stuff. When I'm away, we'll play World of Warcraft together for like an hour and a half every day. That's how I hang out with him. We're playing, we're talking to each other, and, you know, and I feel like I'm there with him. Um, that's how I started playing that game. <laughs> Wasted a lot of my life playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Jimmy Olsen replaced after the first season? Why was Jimmy Olsen replaced after the first season? Well, um, Michael Landis uh, played Jimmy Olsen the first season. Great guy, very good actor. Um, one of the things they were always saying was he looked too much like me, which I thought was funny. Um, and uh, apparently there were some renegotiation issues after the first season. Uh, and I think that led to his ultimate demise. And they brought in Justin Whalen, who was fantastic as well. Um, different. It certainly didn't look just like me. Uh, but I don't know if that I don't know if looking like me was the case. I think it was more of a contractual thing. And they used that as an opportunity to sort of win me. Yeah, I heard that thought he was fired because he did resemble you. Oh, well, that may be. Yeah, I think that that may have been something in the mix. But again, I wasn't privy to those decisions. I was just happy to have a job at the time. So uh, when I wasn't producing the show, so I really don't know the uh, I'd have fired him. How was working with Raquel Welch? Raquel Welch. The day I worked, I got to kiss Raquel Welch. I called my dad and said, I just kissed Raquel Welch. He's like, what? <laughs> I don't think you even understand. The only thing I could have done better in his eyes was kiss Ann Margaret. <laughs> on screen with her or with Tony Curtis or people like that. It was just amazing. Uh, so I had such great respect for that. Um, it was fun. It was fun kissing Rock and well. <laughs> Soft lips. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> In case you were wondering. <laughs> right, Way back on the left. television to what it used to be into what it is now. There's a million reasons for why it's changed, and I don't think it's a necessarily a bad thing. I'm not a huge fan of reality television. I've done a little bit of it um, for various reasons. One, because my buddy produced one of them. He's like, you're going to be on my show. That was my choice, by the way. Um, and um, I did Stars Earned Stripes this last summer, which to me was one of the greatest experiences of my life, because that's such respect for our military men and women in uniform, and law enforcement, first responders. It was amazing. Um, I just think that things have things just naturally evolve. Uh, it used to be when I started as an actor um, 112 years ago <laughs> that you were either a television actor or you were a film actor. And then that evolved into being a television actor to become a film actor, uh, you know, George Clooney or Johnny Depp or something like that. Um, and nowadays a lot of the reality guys are getting a shot. And that, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I don't enjoy the sort of we're in your house. This is our, you know, those kind of reality shows. I don't like that stuff. I see the you know, exploitative in that sense. And, but if people are getting famous on it, so be it. Uh, I think it'll change. You know, we all like to watch a car wreck now and again. And I think a lot of those shows are car wrecks. And, um, you know, people are interesting to people always. So those shows will work to some degree. I don't particularly like them. My son doesn't watch them. I don't know many people who do. But apparently there are a lot of people who do watch them. I think it's going to change again and again and again. I really have no idea. I mean, whoever did the Truman Show back in the day, um, they were they, they knew what they were talking about. That was quite interesting. It was very prophetic. And 
you know, I just think there's so many channels and so many places to put content now. You can make all kinds of different shows. I like that there's so many places to put content. I mean, a show like uh, Mounts that I'm about to do for VH1, I don't think it goes on a network. So I love the fact that you have more more places to find work and more areas. I mean, even doing webisodes. People are doing that. You know, a lot of very famous people are doing webisodes. I mean, like all the Funny or Die stuff and all those things. I think that's the reason James Vanderbeek is on the B, Don't Trust the B in Apartment 23. He did that funny stuff with those G, the Gene commercials, the Dilf commercials. You ever see those? They are very tongue-in-cheek, but he was hysterical, and he sort of plays that same character on the B in Apartment 23. So um, I think it's an ever-evolving medium, and it, it, it will continue to be so. Where it's going, I don't know. Dean, when you uh, were working on Lois and Clark, um, were you or, or the uh, the crew looking at any of the comics? Were you drawing on any of the comics, or was that a, or did you consciously distance yourself from the Superman comics, or did you go back and look at the classic stories? I mean, my, my classic story is Crisis on Infinite Earths, which came before the show about five years before the show. Like, which Superman did you look at? Well, DC Comics was working hand in hand with us when we were doing the show, and I know our writers group was. Constantly looking at different guys to bring in and different villains from past from past uh, uh, past uh, comic episodes and so on and so forth. I mean, even Mary and Lois and Clark, we sort of did that in, in concert with DC Comics. And, um, I wrote two of the episodes. Um, one of them we used uh, the Toy Man, you know, and you, so you pull from different things. And the other one we sort of made up. But there are a lot of there was a lot of working going going on between us and DC. And they were there a lot. They come down and. Um, we had a real nice partnership, so we were certainly uh, having discussions the whole time. I was pushing, you know, we, we were going to do a fifth season. It ended in the fourth season and uh, ended sort of unceremoniously with this baby being delivered and that was it. There was never any answer. There was supposed to be a whole fifth season. We were going to do a fifth season. Terry got pregnant and wasn't able to work, and that's what uh, was the final plug for her. Um, they could have gotten creative and turned her into somebody else like the soap operas do or done something or yeah. had her be pregnant. I wanted it, I wanted them to have kids because I wanted to sort of rewrite what happens if uh, the Kryptonian and an Earth person have kids. And, you know, we make the rules. So I wanted to sort of start breaking new ground. But there was a lot of um, pushback on that and they were pushed back. In fact, they got married. People thought that ruined the show. And, um, I disagree. I think it would have been a lot more fun had we been able to go through a fifth season, had kids, do a whole thing, and you know, make up, make up the rules. Kids are grown, you know. One day they're six, the next day they're fourteen. <laughs> the next day they're flying. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> but that's but that we worked a lot with them. Yeah, that's interesting. I think I recall that it was due to the show that the wedding between Lois and Clark took place in the comics, right? Well, they're you know. Chicken the egg, who knows? Yeah, I think they was, were doing it together. Yeah, and, and as you were saying, um, it's, it's been oh, almost 75 years, I think, just about Superman's been around. And uh, you know, how long has it been that there's the, the, the love triangle? It's not really a triangle. And we, it's the unrequited love. They pushed that forever and want that to be the case. Yeah, but, but we've never really seen what would happen if they did have a child. And that, that would have been neat, actually. That would have been Smallville. Yeah. I would, and I would have got the spin off rights. <laughs> 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 Actually, did they sort of do that in one of the uh, Superman movies? Yeah. Which we were they had again? They started to, yeah. They started to. But that that was the last film. That's they also but they also had another man raising Superman's child, which I wasn't a big fan of. Um yeah, they so they started having that a little bit happen in, in, in the film, which I thought was fun. And that's interesting. And that could have you know, we could have gone that direction, which I thought would have been a lot of fun. That was a shoot off, basically, from your, your series. It very well could have been. I'm not going to say where they, the germ of the idea came from because I wasn't involved, but it very well could have been. Right, someone who hasn't, uh, okay. it's a girl. <laughs> Does it surprise you at all that 19 years after Lois and Clark first premiered? Holy smokes! Watch your tongue! But there are still fan fictions being written, still getting together, discussing the episodes. 
getting together watching episodes together once a week. Not because it's Superman, but because it's Lois and Clark. This guy. I, I, that's an ultimate compliment. I think that, that uh, that's amazing and fantastic. And I hope that because it's aired on a hub and stuff like that now, uh, more people will get interested in stuff like that. I, I, it's amazing to be part of a show um, that are people are talking about. 19 years after it aired, <laughs> <laughs> premiered, uh, it's amazing, and it's great. It's a whole other generation or two of people. Um, so I, I think it's great, and I, and I hope that continues. But yeah, that's, thanks for putting that in perspective. <laughs> I hate to be the super villain, but it's about 350 and... <coughs> well, let's get another one the last one. Oh, that was a pretty good one to end on. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to pick the last one. I'm with the gentleman at the far back. Uh, I love Christmas Rush. What was it like working with Eric Roberts? Eric, I've done like two or three films now with Eric yeah. Roberts. That was great fun. Christmas Rush, we shot in Winnipeg, and they since renamed it one time called yeah, Breakaway. Breakaway, which is interesting, and I have no control over that. Um, Eric's great. Yeah. Eric's a really nice guy. And here's the guy who had, he was the guy. I mean, he was the guy. He had his real shot. He'll tell you he got involved in drugs and alcohol and some problems and that just brought him down. Um, still has tremendous talent, great instincts as an actor. I worked with him not very long ago. Um, I'm burned out we did something together, which was fun. Um, and he's just a great guy um, and he's a very humble guy. And after being in the position he was in, you know, you get a shot, you get one big shot in Hollywood. He had that shot, he was the guy. It's a, it's a tough call from Grace, but I think he's picked him up, himself up very well, redeemed himself quite a bit. and. Um, He's, I mean, he's just, he's in a better place in his life than he certainly was back then. Uh, I'll work with Eric anytime, anytime. He's a, he's a great guy and uh, a, a, a really fun actor to work on screen with because he's so talented. He doesn't like when you throw curveballs at him too much, though. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Any other questions, you can uh, please go to Mr. Cade's table. And thank you so much. Okay.